Hey everyone, Brypone here, back with another video, and this week we're taking a look at CVE 2023-23397, or the Outlook vulnerability. This one is very serious, but it's useful for a red team right now, in particular because you can spray an organization with simply meeting invites to get that level of hashes and relay them. This is also very dangerous. So if your organization is not aware of this, you need to be patching this now. Just stop the video here and go patch and then come back when you're done and I can show you how deep this rabbit hole goes. But I wanted to illustrate how far you can get if you haven't taken good security steps here. If you allow your domain admins to log in with their domain admin account and use email, this is how deep it can go. So we have Outlook here and we're going to be using Hunter's account. Hunter is a domain admin. So if we pop it up here, you can see I did net group domain admins domain and we can see Hunter is a domain admin and he's logging in as his account. No, don't do this. Bad idea. So what can we do to exploit Hunter? Well, we can simply send him a meeting invite. But before we do that, let's go ahead and set up NTLM RelayX. So NTLM RelayX allows us to relay net NTLM hashes to whatever we choose, whether that be the domain controller, the certificate authority, so on and so forth. In this case, we're going to use the certificate authority. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in this command because it's quite long. And you can see we're doing sudo impacket NTLM RelayX dash T, and this is the certificate authority HTTP server. We're doing SMB2 support, ADCS, and then we're going to do a template of a user certificate. So I want a certificate for the user that I'm going after. You can use different certificate templates, but it may not grant. And you may only get one shot at this. So make sure you're using the right template. Okay, so we now have our listener set up. And we're going to come over here to our Win10 host one. And we're going to use the vulnerability. So in this case, I don't have a full email set up in my lab, so I'm just going to save off a meeting request instead of sending it from another user. So we're using Advarmo's PowerShell script. He's from TrustedSec. This works great. I'm just going to do the save version of this. If you do send, it will actually send this email, and that will trigger the vulnerability in the remote person. But in this case, we're going to be doing save calendar and TLM leak. So we'll do save calendar NTLM leak remote file path. And then we're doing the address of our, our uh, Kali box, which is right here. We're going a folder that does not exist and then file.wave. We're going to do a meeting subject, a project timeline and sync to catch up on project timeline, something obscure, right? Something that wouldn't stand out. So we'll go ahead and we'll do save calendar link here. And we're going to see that go, come back over here and we're going to see the pop up. And once the pop-up happens, that's when the vulnerability is triggered. There's our pop-up. Vulnerability has been triggered because it reached out over the network and tried to get that WAV file. That's on my Kali box. So if I come over here to my Kali box now, I have a certificate for this user. I relayed the net NTLM hashes to the certificate authority. The certificate authority granted me a certificate and sent it back. Okay. Step one, we have a certificate. Now, what can we do with that? Right? I'm an attacker. I've got a certificate. I don't have a password. I don't have hashes. Well, we can get hashes. So let's get hashes. We're going to start by copying out all of this base64, because this is a base64 of the binary certificate. So we'll, we'll stop until I'm really X. I'll go VI cert. B64. So we're using VI to create a file that we're pasting in our base64. So we'll paste that in. And we're going to do escape and then colon right quit. Now you can use nano, you can use any of your favorite text editors here, whatever you use, just put it into a file that can be catted out, right? So now I can cat this cert.base64. And I've got my text. So now I need to unbase 64 this text. So I want to make a PFX file. So I'm going to pipe to base 64 D. 
And then I'm going to output to cert dot pfx, just like that. And now I have my pfx file. So if I cat my pfx file, I get something that looks like binary because this is a binary file now, right? So I have my pfx file. That's step one of getting the hash. Next step using certify. So and this got a little squirrely here. Let me clear the screen. So we're going to use certify and certify is going to allow us to authenticate with the certificate that we got and get back the hash of the user. Then we'll have the hash of a domain admin. So we're escalating here. We're getting more serious. The certificate is pretty serious, but the hash is more because I can do more with it. So I'm going to do cert certify and then I'm going to do auth pfx and then i'm going to do cert pfx here and then i'm going to do the dc dash ip and that's 192.168.136.10 so oh didn't take i must have gotten something wrong oh i forgot to give it oh i see i put a dash in front of auth it's not dash auth it's auth And there we go. And now I have the hash of the user. So many of you probably know where I'm going with this at this point. Once I have the hash of the user and I've got a domain admin, I can DC sync. Now DC sync is an attack that says, hi, I'm a domain controller, replicate all of your hashes to me. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna use a tool called secret stump for that. So we're gonna do impact it. That's secret stump, just like that. And then we're gonna do hashes. And then we're gonna copy this out. This is the hashes that we need. We'll get to the end of this and then we're gonna give it our domain. Actually, we're gonna do that. Oh, come on backspace, Hack lab, hunter. And then the domain controller, so 192.168.136.10. And here we go. Oh, if I could type, I mistyped it. Secrets dump. There we go. And here we, here we go. We're dumping out every hash in the AD. And you can see them come down. So you now have complete control of this environment, right? Now, if you wanted to go further, you can get the KRB TGT account from here and you can set up golden and diamond tickets. You can also jump across trusts. So this is complete control of this environment from a user not even clicking an email, just literally opening Outlook. So that's how deep the rabbit hole can go. But let's do one for the blue team here. So if we jump over to our domain controller and we filter our current log for event ID 4768, you can see in here some odd looking authentication on 4768. Now notice you see Hunter right here, right? You see this certificate serial number and this certificate thumbprint and this certificate issuer name? This is abnormal authentication. Unless you have like, uh, you know, smart card in your environment, you almost never see that. Notice these authentication events do not have anything in the certificate issuer, serial, or thumbprint. There's another one that I did earlier. Same thing, same user. Notice it's Hunter. So this is the telltale sign when you've seen something relayed to your domain controller. Whenever you see this, and there's another one that I did earlier. When you see this, you should be alerting. This is the telltale sign that something was passed in. So it's a good way to catch it. So do one for the blue team here on catching us red teamers. So this explains the Outlook vulnerability and how deep the rabbit hole can go. If you haven't patched this already, stop the video right here and go patch. Come back when you're done patching, right? But this one is very serious and very important, and it's already being used by threat groups. So protect yourself, protect your organization, get this patch out there as quickly as possible. 
And that's it for this week. Once again, thank you for watching and hack the planet to defend better.